In my opinion, there are two main issues with owning a Sega Saturn in 2022. The first issue is with the disc-based games. I'm not a big fan of disc-based media, especially in retro consoles. I'm a little paranoid of disc rot or having a disc in such bad shape where it won't play in the original console, and I just don't see the appeal of buying used discs for old consoles, especially in today's prices. There are a couple of ways around this issue. You could use a mod chip or a pseudo Saturn cartridge, both of which will allow you to play burned games in your Saturn. Alternatively, you could use an ODE or optical disk drive emulator, which allows you to play your games directly from an SD card. In this video, I'm going to focus on the Fenrir ODE, but there are a couple of other ODE options for the Saturn. Let's talk about my second issue with the Saturn. The internal memory chip that stores save games will only save those games as long as the internal coin cell battery has a charge. As soon as that battery dies, so do all of the save games that were stored on that internal memory chip. Thankfully, there is a fix to this issue known as the FRAM mod. There is an FRAM RAM memory chip with the same footprint as the original memory chip that will keep your internal save game data even if that battery dies. However, before we do any of these mods, it's very important to know which model of the Sega Saturn that you own. For example, the Fenrir comes in two different versions, a 20 pin version and a 21 pin version, and that depends on the number of pins inside of your console's disk drive flex cable. Also, the FRAM chip might be installed in a different location depending on your specific console's motherboard. So before modding your Saturn, verify which model that you have have and be sure to order the correct parts for your Saturn. Anyways, let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to do the FRAM mod and install the 21 pin Fenrir into my Japanese Model 2 Sega Saturn. The first thing we have to do to mod this Sega Saturn is to take the case apart. Unfortunately, these screw holes on the bottom here are too deep for my iFixit screwdriver. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a normal screwdriver and screw apart these screws on the bottom of the case. Now that we have the Saturn motherboard out of the case, let's go ahead and talk about installing this FRAM chip. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to Sega Saturn modding, but I am gonna use two references that are gonna help me explain to you the process of this FRAM mod. The first thing I'm gonna use is this post from Bob from RetroRGB. This post contains some high level information about doing the FRAM mod just in general. The other reference I'm gonna use is this Consoles Unleashed guide, which has more details about the specific motherboard revisions and how to install the FRAM mod into each one. But that being said, let's go ahead and find out what version of the Saturn motherboard that we have. If you look here in the middle, this is a VA10 console. If you've got a VA10 console, you can pretty much follow along with what I'm gonna do. But I'll do my best to cover this FRAM mod in general for a wide variety of motherboards. First, let's go ahead and find the RAM chip that we're gonna be replacing on this board. In this case, it's this chip right here. That console's unleashed post will have more information about where this chip might be located in different versions. We're gonna need to remove this chip first, and I'm gonna use this Hado rework station for that. It's important to know that some versions of the Sega Saturn motherboard actually use epoxy to stick this chip to the board. So not only is it soldered in, but it's also glued to the board. But I'm gonna leave a link to a Voltar video that explains more about how to handle chips here that have that epoxy underneath. Before we do any soldering, I'm gonna actually put some captain tape to cover up these small components on the left side and the right side of this large memory chip. These components here are pretty tiny and I just don't want to lose them while I'm doing this soldering. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this nice VS213 Amtec flux, both sides. This is some super awesome flux that make megahertz cells. I'm gonna add some fresh solder to both sides of this chip.
I'm gonna add a little bit more flux. I'm gonna set my hydro rework station to 375 degrees Celsius at 70%. That's actually recommended in Bob's guide. I'm just gonna go around the outside edge of this chip that heat up the solder. Wow, that chip came right off. It's too hot for me to hold right now, but I think that that temperature, 375 at 70%, at least in my A10 ST862D, that was the perfect temperature and airflow. I don't think we lost any of the chips around the outside edges either, so that's pretty good. We can go ahead and remove this captain tape now, and let's clean up the solder on the pads here. It's some solder braid. And we can clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. Now that the old RAM chip is removed, we can work on installing our new FRAM chip. Before we solder this chip, we're gonna lift two of the legs to make the next part easier. The legs that we wanna lift are 28 and 22, which if you have the label facing right side up here, 28 is the top left pin in that corner there, and so 22 is six over somewhere in the middle of that top side. So I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm gonna try to bend pin 28 up just a little bit there, enough so that it's not gonna make contact with the board when we solder the other legs. And now we're gonna count five more legs. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the next one is 22. There we go, 28 and 22 are lifted. Now we can hand solder this chip, but let's make sure it's in the right orientation. If the label is right side up here, and you'll see a half moon on the left corner here, there's a half circle here on the board. So those are going to line up. I'm gonna put some liquid flux on the board here. And with a little solder on my soldering iron, let's go ahead and tack this chip down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top left of the board, making sure to skip pin 28, the one that we lifted already. A little more solder on our soldering iron and tack those legs down. All right, now we can solder the remaining pins. Go ahead and add some more liquid flux and solder the rest of those pins. All right, let's flip it around to the other side. Let's go ahead and clean it up with some IPA again. I'd say that looks pretty good. Now next, we're gonna have to solder a couple of wires from those two lifted legs to some pads on the motherboard. Pin 28 on the left here needs to be soldered to a five volts line and pin 22 needs to be soldered to ground. You can pull five volts and ground from pretty much anywhere that supplies five volts or ground, but I'm gonna use the consoles unleashed guide and find some nearby points on my particular motherboard. It looks like for this version of the board, the CE111 has this positive and negative spot here on the board. Positive will be five volts and the other one is for ground. I'm gonna use this nice red silicone wire to wire up pin 28. Let's go ahead and strip into it. And while we're at it, we can go ahead and tin the positive and negative pad on CE 111. Set a bit of flux to the bottom one and solder it on. Let's add a little solder to pin 28. And then I'm going to line the wire up with pin 28 and give it a cut. can tin this end too. And let's try to solder the wire onto pin 28. Now we can wire up pin 22 using this black silicone wire.
And there's a new FRAM chip all wired up. Let's go ahead and put the board back into the bottom of the case. Next, we're going to talk about how to install this 21-pin Fenrir into this Model 2 Sega Saturn. I also 3D printed my own copy of Laser Bear's Fenrir mount. I bought the SD card extension and the screws directly from Laser Bear. So let's see what it takes to install this Fenrir mount. The first thing we can do is take this new flex cable and connect it where the old disk drive connected to. In order to use Laser Bear's mount, we have to remove these four black posts here. Let's flip the sheath over, and we're gonna unscrew these four screws on the bottom. Now we can kind of squeeze these out. Now we can take the base piece here and put it over the top of where those black posts were on the top side. Now we can line up these holes on the bottom and then using these tiny black screws, we can secure the shield here to that 3D printed piece. Let's put the black piece back over here by the battery. And now we can take the flex cable and feed it through the shield. And then as we lower the shield down, we take the other cable, thread it through this hole here, and then lower the shield down. Next, we need to add this little 3D printed piece here so that we can mount this Fenrir. And before we actually put the Fenrir on there, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the flex cable. and then connect the power cable. And we can kind of place the Fenrir on the posts. Now, since I 3D printed my own, I actually have to put that SD card mount inside of the top part of the mount here. Peel this back part off here, slide this SD card extension through. Kind of snaps into place. Hey, it looks pretty good. Let's put the back cover on. And we can screw it in back here. And now this triangle piece is going to sit on top of that. Screw it down. And now we can connect the micro SD connection to the micro SD slot. Then we can put the Fenrir on top of the mount. Now we can take these longer black screws here and screw down the top of the Fenrir. With the Fender installed, I'm gonna go ahead and put my Sega Saturn back together and give it a test. Before we can actually test the Saturn with the Fenrir, we have to set up an SD card for it. First, I'm gonna format an SD card. I have a pretty big 256 gigabyte SD card, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the XFAT file system. Now we need the actual firmware for the Fenrir. Let's go to the Fenrir website, and on the firmware page, we'll scroll down and select the firmware that we wanna download. I have the 21 pin version of the Fenrir, so go ahead and download the firmware. Then I can copy this firmware into the SD card. Then the first time we boot up the Fenrir, it will install this firmware. The last thing that we're gonna need is some games, so I'm gonna add some to this SD card. Once you've got some games, you can go ahead and boot up your Saturn. As soon as we boot up the Saturn, it's going to display the Fenrir menu. And it's honestly pretty simple. All you have to do is select which game you wanna play and press A. Sega Rally Championship. If you need to get into the Saturn BIOS or home screen, all you have to do is hold down the A, B, C buttons and press start. It's kind of like an in-game reset, but it brings you back to that Saturn menu. If this video helped you do the FRAM mod or install the 21 pin Fenrir into your Sega Saturn, leave this video a like and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my mod installation tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Very long, easy work. Checkpoint, medium work.